welcome back. We're here with the two Welsh corgis, Pip and Jack, and their owner Christine. Now we've met Pip before, right? She was on an earlier episode having a caesarean. That's right, and Jack's one of the puppies from that litter. He looks as if he's doing well. What about the rest of the puppies? They're great. They're in their homes all over the country. Yeah, cool. So what makes a corgi a good pet? They're fun-loving, even-tempered, and they don't have too many health problems. Sounds pretty good to me. Absolutely. Well, next up, Jeremy got to visit some flying, furry Australians. Yeah, and they were pretty cute too. Bats are the only mammals that can achieve sustained flight like a bird. There are a thousand species of bat in the world, and there are 90 species living in Australia. The fruit bat, or flying fox, lives in and around Australian cities such as Brisbane and Queensland. There's often antagonism towards these little creatures because they raid people's fruit trees and make a lot of noise. But today I'm meeting a group of conservationists who support orphaned and injured Australian fruit bats. So I'm here with Louise Saunders, who is president of the Bat Society here in Queensland. And uh, she's already put me to work slicing up apples as bat food, right? That's right. So what are you doing there? Uh, I'm loading the troughs. They're for support food for the animals that we've already released. So um, we, what we do is we fill up the feeders and uh, hoist them up into the trees and the animals come here just for a bit of a top up and then they go out and hopefully are feeding off the native uh, fruits and, and flowers and not relying too much on what we feed them here. So why in particular do you use apples? Apple is very close um, in texture and flavour to uh, some of the native fruits, uh, especially lily pillies. Yep. In a couple of hours a large number of fruit bats will arrive for their night I, feed. I don't think it will. Bats play an important role in the Australian ecosystem as they carry seeds in their digestive system and help pollinate native trees by carrying pollen on their fur. Without bats, the Australian rainforest wouldn't look like it does today. Here we go. The bat rescue operation has around 30 volunteers looking after the injured bats. Good. So this is the new arrival then. <laughs> yes. Hello Denise, how's he going? Oh, he's doing very well, he's just had a bottle so he's nice and relaxed now with a full tunnel, so he's pretty happy. Well I mean you can see he's taking it all in, yeah. you know, those big eyes, his ears mm. are going flat tack the whole time, just knowing exactly what's going on. He's a smart cookie. He is. Yeah. Dreadfully cute. Yes. So what sort of condition do they arrive in? Generally they come in pretty poor condition if they've been caught in netting or trapped oh, on a barbed wire fence. fence. Mm. They come in with their mouths torn and their bones broken and their membrane ripped off and mm. sometimes you have compound fractures of bones. So a lot of the time they're in a pretty bad state. They also come in in deep shock and severely dehydrated. The road to recovery can take a few weeks depending on the injuries. To avoid relying on human intervention, every effort is made to return them to the wild as soon as possible. So I'll just grab the cage out of here? Yes. Cool. Come on little guy. So why in particular this spot? Oh, any spot is okay for an adult male to just go back into a colony. So I can see that there's bats up in the trees here. How big is this colony? Uh, it's actually a good sized colony for the area. There's about 5,000 animals here. Yeah. It's a nice urban camp. Yeah, well there's houses just across the road and <laughs> you've got 5,000 right. bats out there. That's yep. pretty special. So should we have a look at this little one? Yep. His injuries are all healed. He just had a bit of a mouth injury and uh, he can smell the other bats mm. there and <laughs> he thinks it's time to fly. They're pretty cute, huh? This bat will shortly join over 5,000 bats in the Black Swamp Colony situated in this suburban reserve. So I'll just open the cage and he'll see all his friends and he'll fly away. Just like that. Yay, wonderful. So he's making his way up, up the tree. Is, is there any reason for that? He'll climb up to the highest point now. Oh yeah, I can see him do it. Yeah, right. And he'll fly up with the other, the other bats. Very good climbers. He's climbing with his thumb, thumbs there and his hind feet. He can see his friends up in the top of the trees and he's trying to climb up as high as he can so that he can get a lift when he flies. So he'll fly up and out. Right, there's a bit of a drop first, yeah. yeah. As dusk falls, the rehabilitated bats start to gather for their food top-up at the Bat Society's feeding station, a couple of kilometres away. 
I'm not really sure how much sort of the camera is able to grasp how many bats are flying around all over the place. They are in all the trees, they're feeding up here, but whenever we move all that close they sort of move away, which is apparently is quite a good thing because it means they're still a little bit scared of humans, but it is really a spectacular thing to see. I didn't expect so many bats flying around, I sort of thought one or two in the trees, and it just goes to show how much your conservation work is doing for these guys. Yeah, we're really proud of what we do and just seeing our orphans flying around at night is just the icing on the cake. Yeah, it's pretty special. <laughs> Well, I guess I can't see anywhere near as well at night as a bat can, so <laughs> maybe we should head off. OK, let's turn out the lights and go. Great. Less human contact will ensure bat numbers increase in Australia and New Zealand. In New Zealand, we only have two surviving species of native bats, and they are on the endangered list, reinforcing our need to protect these mammals for generations to come. In Aussie, those bats live right in the suburbs. Amazing. Well, it's time now for our Animal Academy salute. This week, going out to a cat called Maceo. Now, Maceo's owners, Kate and Bevan, were asleep one night when a fire broke out just metres from their bedroom window. Yeah, Maceo dipped her paws in the toilet, getting them wet, and she walked on their faces until they woke up. And thanks to that, they managed to escape before the fire spread to their bedroom. Awesome stuff, Maceo. Well, if you know someone or some animal that deserves an Animal Academy salute, we'd love to hear from you. Just go to our website at tvnz.co.nz slash Animal Academy and tell us all about them. Well, that's it for Animal Academy this time. So thanks to Pip and Jack and their owner, Christine. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye. Bye.